Hi everyone, today's video is going to be about consent forms. Everybody already created some really cool power apps and um, they have included a connector in there, maybe probably a SharePoint one or maybe a SQL one or a different connector. What usually happens when you embed a power app inside of SharePoint maybe or inside of Teams, you have to, uh, as a user of that app, you have to um, allow the connector to be used. So whenever you embed it, for instance, on the SharePoint site and uh, a user of that app opens the SharePoint site, then they will see a consent form. And that consent form is to make sure that the user agrees with uh, the connector using their data in that app. And um, what's actually the case is that in embedded scenarios, that is not really a really good scenario because a lot of people will have to click allow. They don't really know what it what it is for, for instance. But um, there is luckily something you can do about that. So here we are in the Power Apps Maker Portal. Um, if you to make that powerapps.com, you will end up here and then uh, select apps. In this case. I have already opened my SP app, um, and that's this app. It's just the standard, uh, the standard template for SharePoint uh, for the mobile app. So what it, it, this is, is actually a contact um, list in SharePoint. And I have added a couple of contacts in here. Um, it's nothing really spectacular, uh, but when I switch to a different user, which I actually have here. You can see there's a demo user here. And if I switch to the other one, you can see that it's just my own account. So when I look at the demo user, demo user also has the SP app. And when I open that up, I get a consent form. So I can consent that the power app is gonna use uh, the SharePoint connector I have included in the SharePoint app. So, this is something I don't want because I want to include this one on the SharePoint page, uh, embed it over there, and then I don't want to have an allow or don't allow uh, box available here. I just want the users of that app to immediately see the data that's in there. So let's go back to my other screen where I'm just Daniel, not the demo user. Luckily, there is something and it's PowerShell support for Power Apps. Um, and of course, how you can get to this page, I will include a link in the, in the description, but you can also just Google for PowerShell Power Apps and you'll get the first link probably and uh, see what's in there. So I'm gonna skip to the Power Apps commandlets for administrators preview. And when you select that, you can actually see all kinds of uh, information, prerequisites, for instance, but also all the commandlets that are available here. So you can, for instance, change the display name of an uh, Power App environment. Uh, you can uh, recover a Power App environment, for instance. You can create a new CDS database. There's lots of stuff, stuff available in here. Um, if we scroll down a little bit more, um, there's two that I think are really important in this scenario, and that's set admin power app APIs to bypass consent and the clear admin power apps APIs to bypass consent. So we can probably use this a little bit later uh, to make sure that we, um, that we can skip the consent form. Um, if you see this uh, this uh, this this page, you can actually uh, scroll down a little bit and see how you can install the different parts. Um, there's also um, a Microsoft Power Apps Administration PowerShell module, which is actually referenced in this uh, this part. Um, you can find that in the PowerShell gallery, and then you already have the install module um commandlet in there so i'm just gonna copy that one and i'm gonna switch to my windows terminal which i already started so let's include the install module commandlet 
and press enter. I can um, say yes in here to make sure that I trusted this repository and it will start install uh, installing the whole um, the whole module in there. Okay, let's switch back. And at the top, uh, we can see here that the first command after installing, um, you want to have uh, the add power apps account setting. So when you run this uh, command that I can uh, actually say always run in this case. And then I probably will get a pop up. It's not yet working here. Ah, here it is. It was just hidden. So when I select my account in here and I need to grab my password. Oh, wrong one. So let me see, I can get that one and add it in here. So now I am connected. So let's see what I can do now. So let's go to uh, the administrators part and get something simple. So uh, get admin power app environment. Let's do that and see what happens here. So it gave me a couple of parts in here. So I can see that I have multiple environments here. And um, yeah, that's actually really interesting. Uh, but for now, uh, we of course want to have the power app. Um, so let's go back to the Windows, um, the, the Windows terminal and select the environment name I want to use a little bit later. And let me just open a notepad really quick. Oh, wrong one. Let's copy and paste this again. I hope this works. Yes, correct. So now I can uh, go to the other one. Um, I first need to get the ID of my app and I can actually just grab that from here probably. This is the app ID. So let's copy and paste that as well. And let's move, uh, sorry, let's move to the documentation again and use the set admin power app APIs to bypass content. So I probably need to answer some, enter some other values in here. So it wants the app name. We already copied that. So oh, hold on, there we go. That's the app name. And it says, okay. So let's just uh, switch to my other screen again and open up the SP app and see what happens. There you go. The consent form is already gone. So it is that easy. You don't have to use another, uh, another uh, environment name, for instance, what I thought that I needed to do but I only need to have the app name and that's it. So it's really easy to use. And in this way, you can just make sure that the consent forms don't appear all the time for uh, embedded scenarios. Of course, there is a use, why, if a use case why they had that there. Um, and that's because it's good for people to know what happens to their data. So that's why the allow or don't allow uh, consent form is there. But I can imagine in some scenarios, you don't want to have that in there. But don't do this to every app you have because that will 
probably um, lead to a lot of mistrust from uh, from people. So make sure that you uh, do this only for scenarios that really need it. With that, we uh, are at the end of the video. So thank you for watching and make sure to like and subscribe. See you soon. Bye bye.